everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Didsbury Art Studio and I am Sally and today I want to get straight into doing an autumnal weave. So over here I have got several different wools, really big chunky wools that I'm going to use and I will be looking at an artist reference which I'll include here and just can't remember the name right now, but I will add her here. Ah, Julia Wright, there we go. Julia Wright is a weaving artist, so I'm gonna be looking at her as a reference, and we're gonna be doing a little bit of weaving and binding and wrapping with some fabrics and wools. So shall we get straight into it? So as you can see today, I have got my board portrait. It could look a little bit different with the weave, although there's gonna be a difference anyway with the fact that I've chosen autumn, different wool colors, and also a different artist. The image that I'm gonna to use to inspire me, I will put up on the screen now. And I think that those leaves just kind of represent to me autumn when you're kind of looking down at the leaves and they're changing color. And so we are gonna do that. Now this, process today is going to be a little bit more organic than the methodical ways that I was using with the other two. I'm going to be a little bit more fluid with the ideas and I will probably include some beads in this one and I also want to do a vertical stripe somewhere in this one too and I also want to use some fabrics. So I found some fabrics and I'll definitely use some of those in the piece. So one of the things that I've noticed that this artist, Julia Wright, does is she kind of like grabs fabrics and wraps them, which I love doing anyway. And she's kind of done different sh shapes um, with embroidery threads wrapped around fabrics and stuffed different areas. So I'm going to probably do some weave and then some 3D bits in there. Okay. Hours of fun. Okay then, so I am looking to my left hand side a lot because that's where the image is of the autumnal leaves that I'm following. And right now I am just starting from the top of the weaving board and left to right over and under with a tabby weave. And then I'm just switching colors I've got some beautiful autumn coloured wool there and now I'm on to my mustard colour and I'm going to do some more tabby weave and I'm just generally trying to keep it quite fluid. I don't want the shapes to be geometric at all, I just want them to be flowing into one another I guess. So I'm jumping on there to including a variety of different colours and thicknesses of wools and I've also added that brown felt um, and done a tabby weave there. Over there I am just starting to do part of a sumac weave with some quite thick felt. And I'm trying to link everything together. And there I'm just starting to do a wrap with embroidery thread wrapped around to bind the felt. And then I'm going to feed it through again the same process over and under. And it's quite nice to just outline some of the colours of the wools that I've already done. 
it just finishes off the colours quite nicely and separates them out. So there I'm doing the Raya loop knots. I do absolutely love those. It just provides a nice texture, doesn't it? I did a lot of those in the last weave based on spring. So just going to add a fabric wrap that I've done there. Just got like um, some satin pink fabric out and just chunky sort of grabbed all the fabric into a long length and wrapped it with some embroidery thread and there I've got a collection of fabrics just strips of fabric and felt and wools um, tying a knot at the top and then I just take one of the strands whichever one it is and just start wrapping that around and it just keeps the whole wrap overall wrap together and then I'm just deciding where the best place is to go. I noticed that Julia Wright sort of puts her wraps side by side so I'm going to try and insert that somewhere and right there I've just added another tabby weave, just a nice plain weave um, in between some of the wraps. Just picking up on the colours that are in the leaf picture that I'm following. And then I am just showing you how to do a vertical weave. So you take one colour and feed it across over and under process. Once you get to the other side with your colour, you then pick up the other colour and take it back underneath. And you get this beautiful stripey effect. I'm going back to making another wrap but I'm going to start off with a loop there and then I'm going to do a bit of twisting and wrapping and then I decided, I just had a little play around um, I decided to twist the wools and feed them through the warp and I just like that overall effect. I'm going in with another loop and some prepared wools again. And I'm twisting them. And the more I twist, the more it just produces these kind of twisty, knotty effects, like a 3D effect, which I'm really loving. So I'm going to pop those back underneath the warp to hold them in. Now the beauty of this is because it's not on an actual loom, it's on a board, I don't plan to take this weave off the board, so I can just trap some of the wools underneath and it's not going to fall apart. If I was taking it off the board, which you can do, then I'd just be a little bit more careful about how I'm finishing off the sides. But as it happens, I've always liked just that draping effect anyway of the walls that are just overflowing at the side there. I think it just flows really well. And then Julia Wright, the artist that I've looked at as a reference, she puts different shapes of fabrics and puts those into her weave. So you can see that I've just made a kind of random circle there out of fabric and I'm just securing it all with some wools and embroidery threads. Tying a knot just to finish it off. And then I'm going to just plant it over on that right hand side. 
Oh, here's my friend. So I start to do another wrap. And I'm going in with just outlining the previous shape there that I've done, that binded wrap shape. I think it works really well. You may remember that shirt from a charity shop haul video that I did. Um, it's just a spare one that I've not used, so I'm going in with the dusty pink fabric and I'm going to ruche it. Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to ruche it up and pop it in there. Now I'm on to another day. I really like this rope texture here. I've left some of it showing through and then used some of the mustard wool to wrap around it but I'm going to leave it quite 3D like that and work around it. Often just experimenting with different materials you can just come out with just unusual outcomes and I really really like what's happening with the rope. Just because the rope was twisted up the way it's been bought if you just untangle it, it leaves that kind of curly twisted effect. So I've decided to leave it in as a 3D sort of feature at the bottom so that it's quite flat the weave at the top and then it's kind of going into some knots, some more 3D kind of areas and then I've wrapped some of the rope with some wools, some of the thick wools and also a little bit of fabric I think and done that on the left hand side too and what I'm trying to do now is link all the colours together so I'm doing a wrap there and I'm trying to sort of get it woven underneath that twisty rope There we go. And I'm just feeding through some more red wool. Continuing to look at the image over there in the left. And I'm back to doing some more wrapping. Decided the best way of doing those wraps is just trapping them between my legs and twisting the fabric around like so. This is Lola messing this morning. What's she got there? What have you got? What have you got, Lola? <laughs> what are you doing? Whoa! She got a little mini ball of wool I got from Hobbycraft. You like that one? You like that one? Hey?
Whoa, no pushing. There's a lot of galloping around going on here from Layla. What I'm trying to do here is just break up this little bit here. I do like the stripes, but I just feel that this is a bit flat overall down this side. So I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of depth and height. I'm just literally weaving through. Freestyling, I guess. It's funny, isn't it? You can spend years teaching and just doing this over the last couple of days is just, I'm just so into it. I just can't focus on much else. It's just kind of that whole process of just enjoyment, really, and just filling in the little gaps and finishing things off. But I do think I've finally finished, making me want to do more. I've got one more coming up on the way, which will be summer. So thanks very much for watching today. And if you liked this video, do give it a thumbs up. Share this YouTube channel, then that would be brilliant. Okay then, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.